Welcome to r slash I don't work here lady, where we share stories about folks that are mistaken for employees by irate customers. And the first story is, look sir, I do work here, and I am the boss. I am not sure if this belongs here, but I have a story that is the exact opposite of I don't work here lady, that I felt would be fun to share. About 5 years ago, I worked at the international center of a university in the United States. To give some background info, I am an Asian female. 5'1 in height, and though I was in my early 30s at the time, I did still look quite young and was often mistaken for being in my early 20s or late teens. My main job responsibility at the time was the recruitment, training, and management of about a dozen international student interns who worked the front desk. Anyways, we had been swamped that AM, so I hadn't had time to go out to eat lunch. I got a sandwich at our campus vending machine and sat down in the break room. The break room was always cold due to the AC blasting through the room, so I put on a comfy university jacket I kept at my desk, just to wear during break. I kept the back room door open to keep an ear out for the front, and let my interns know they could still pop in to ask any questions they want. I had hired a couple new students that month, and they were still learning. A few minutes later, I heard a man's voice yell something along the lines of, No, no, you don't understand. You are stupid, stupid. The childish outcries exclaimed in a grown male voice made me immediately stand up and rush to the front desk area, without even remembering to take my jacket off. The man was literally wagging his finger at my intern and yelling while almost comically stomping his feet. I interjected his tantrum and introduced myself as the intern's supervisor, gave my name and position, and told him I could assist him with the issue. The man immediately looked me up and down, scoffed a short no. He then turned right back to the intern and asked her to call the supervisor as he needed to ask someone who actually works here, not just some young girl like the intern who sits there at the front repeating nonsense. It wasn't my first rodeo with unnecessarily angry students, so I calmly gestured at my intern to step away and planted myself directly in front of him. That made him change his rant towards me, saying, Listen, I know you Chinese want to help each other, but my issue is urgent, and so I need to see your supervisor. Su-per-visor. Call makes dialing phone gesture here, him, and he can sign my I-20. Yes, both my intern and I were Asian, but no, neither of us were Chinese. And I hate when people over-enunciate when speaking to me. My thoughts often immediately go to, English is my first language, moron, as is evident by the fact that I just spoke it to you. Also, it peeved me off that he assumed the supervisor would be male. I did my best to remain calm, however, and confirm the issue. Oh, so you're here to get an I-20 travel signature? If you go online and submit the form, you will... No, GD, you don't understand! He screamed. He then proceeded in a rapid rant, saying that I must get a real staff member, who actually works there, instead of giving him the same instructions again, because he needed his sign now, because he wanted to go out of town tonight, and surely the school didn't want to make him, a student who pays such high tuition, to have to come back on campus just to get his signature, before he leaves the country after his road trip. Do I know how much money he gives to the school? He asked. Do little girls from China even understand how expensive his luxury trip was to book? He wondered. Get the man who can actually help him in here, he demanded. More background info. University students in the US on an I-20 visa need an updated signature on their form every once in a while in order to travel abroad and get back. Now, I hated it when entitled students asked for expedited services just for convenience. Many, many students actually planned ahead and made their requests on time, and it wasn't fair to expedite the process for whoever asked the loudest. I was actually the one who had the power to approve very limited last-minute travel signature requests, due to real emergency situations, such as family, etc. But obviously this guy in his luxury vacation wasn't going to qualify for expedited service, just for being a D-bag. I raised my hand and put my palm out in front of his face for a second, to stop his rapid ongoing rant. Again sir, I am the supervisor in this area. No, let me continue. And I hear your issue. My intern here has given you the instructions for I-20 signatures already, but you want expedited service simply because you don't want to have to come back to our office another day to pick it up. Yes? Okay then. No, let me continue. Unfortunately, that cannot be arranged, so please go home and submit the online form like all of our F1 students and wait two to three business days for a response. He started to speak again, but I put my hand out again to stop him, maintained eye contact and picked up the phone. Also, sir, if you do not leave immediately, I will be calling campus security to escort you out of this building for harassing me and my staff members. But before you go, just so you know, I will be noting in your form that you are missing XX days from school. Note that you must maintain your full-time student status for your visa. As you have kindly told us of your planned weeks of absence, please be ready to submit documentation of why this was an excused absence from your classes. 
Lastly, do not insult my staff again or you will be banned from entering this office again. He stood there stunned for a few seconds, then started to say something again, but I then proceeded to dial the number on the phone. I couldn't remember campus security extension, so I was actually pressing random numbers. And so, he ran out. This may not have been the best solution ever to a yucky situation, but this was actually the first time I kicked a student out of the office, so I was a bit shaken up about it. The best part of the story though is what happened next. My boss at the time, white female in her 40s, walked in a few minutes after and asked me to come talk to her. I thought I was in trouble for some reason, but she actually asked me instead if everything was okay because she met a rude international student outside. Apparently, the rude man had run into my boss outside and he had asked her if she happens to know who is the boss of the girl in there and if she knew how he could talk to him. My boss had said that she was the supervisor of the woman who works in there and asked if she could help. The man apparently then said something along the lines of how she then needed to find him the man highest up the chain because his issue demanded real work. He was rude enough that my boss actually did call campus police to escort him out of campus property. She told me that next time, the moment he raises his voice, I do not need to even engage him in conversation, but can just kick him out immediately, as he was forewarned that is what will happen next time. Another story is, sorry, well, actually, you see, no, can I stop you there? I'm not actually a manager. This happened a few days ago at an airport whilst waiting for a delayed flight. I won't drone on about why. Because I've been traveling for work, I'm in a suit at the time. The shop in question has a large open front and a large part of the store is visible from the seating areas and bar. After eating and hanging around for a few hours, I decided that I fancied a cold beverage from one of the shops. The airport is fairly dead, as we are the last remaining flight out, and I left my baggage with the gentleman who was sat next to me. I enter the store and grab a couple of bottles of coke from the fridge and walk towards the self-service machines when I realize that my wallet was in my jacket with the rest of my stuff. I briskly walk back and, with means to complete my transaction secured, I go back to my items and notice that they have an offer on another fizzy beverage. As I walk past, I noticed a middle-aged woman staring at me, but I don't think much of it. I decide to go for the other drinks, take my items off of the till and return them to the fridge. After placing them and picking up my new selection, I turn around to discover the woman from earlier a few inches in front of me. Before I can even react to this woman, henceforth M.A.W. bursts into an outrage. Middle-aged woman, I wish to make a complaint. Your employees are refusing to serve me. Me, sorry. Middle-aged woman, serve me. I demand that you open the till and serve me properly. Me, well you see, middle-aged woman, I am sick of hearing excuses. I demand you treat me as a proper customer and serve me. I do not pay to do your, whilst grabbing her finger into my chest, job. These machines are a bloody nightmare. Me, actually, middle-aged woman, nightmare, and they never work properly, and I then have to fetch you upteenth times to sort the bliming thing to do what it's supposed to do. Me, look, I'm not, middle-aged woman, and I don't see why I have to use it whilst you both stand around here doing absolutely bugger all useful but moving tad around. Me, um, middle-aged woman, around and chatting. You are not paid to talk and wander around. You are paid to work. I want to make a complaint about him, pointing wildly at the now quite confused employee who is staring at us with a what the heck do I do face on, and I want you to stop me. Let me stop you there. I don't actually work here, I say with a nervous half laugh. I'm also trying to get home just like you are. Middle-aged woman's face drops and there is a long awkward silence. In this time, middle-aged woman's entire demeanor and tone changes and she goes bright red. Middle-aged woman, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I… She reaches out and touches my arm in an apologetic way. I just thought you were, I'm sorry, I didn't, me, it's okay, middle-aged woman, it was just I saw you putting those things back, I just assumed you were his boss, me, haha, <laughs> I see why now, do you want some help with the machine, middle-aged woman, I guess I'll manage, it's not rocket science now is it, me, okay, have a good Christmas, middle-aged woman, you too, I proceed to check out and return to my seat, as I leave middle-aged woman is heading to the self-serve machines herself, leaving the airport, I notice her with a few other people getting into a taxi, with a few other people, I wave at her and she blushes and gives a small wave back. I wonder what her retelling of this event was. The next story is, just because I wear a blue polo does not mean I work here. Hello, long time lurker, first time poster in this subreddit. Just because I recently remembered this event and just decided to tell it. It happened a few months ago, so some details may be a bit fuzzy to say the least. Now, I work at Six Flags and the uniforms for team members are blue polo and either black pants for foods, tan pants for games, retail, etc. I'm also really into guns and seeing as I can't own a real one, I own some airsoft guns and recently had gotten a flashlight grip for one of them and didn't get batteries for it. So checking on Amazon, seeing which ones it took, I decided to go to Walmart after work. It was also hot as balls that day, so I wasn't wearing a normal t-shirt under my uniform and said F it, what's the worst that could happen? I was also listening to music. I walk in and go over to the batteries at the front and can't find them, 
so I decide to go over to the back of the store to see if there was any back there. Sure enough there is, so I grab them and afterwards go to the board games to see if I could find Uno Flip. Did and grab that and started to head to where the shaving cream is. Then this lady comes down the aisle. Lady, excuse me. Me, lip syncing country music while looking for a sensitive shaving gel. Lady, hello, snaps fingers. Me, still lip syncing country music. Lady, ah, takes my headphones. What the, what the heck are you listening to? Me, Kenny Chesney. I was listening to She Thinks My Tractor's Sexy. <laughs> Lady, okay, one, you shouldn't be listening to music during work, and two, this isn't appropriate for work. Me, okay, and I should care why? Lady, because you work here. Me, no I. Lady, and shouldn't you be wearing a name tag? Me, the sarcastic POS I am. Yeah, I should wear a name tag to a place I don't work at. Lady, don't talk back to me, I can have you fired. Me, points to Six Flags logo. Look, I don't work here and I'm not even old enough to work here, so please, just go away. Lady, go get your manager. Me, I don't work here, lady. I grab my headphones, say screw the shaving cream and just go to the self-checkout. After that, she got this worker who I don't know if he was the manager, but I was out the door by the time she spotted me. I don't know what happened, if anything did afterwards, because I never saw the lady again. But yeah, that's my story. The last story is, mistook me and my brother as H&M employees. So my brother and I were shopping. He was looking for a white blouse and was browsing through the clothing racks. We were both wearing our coats and I wore a scarf as well. I had bright pink hair and was carrying two bags from other stores. A man and his wife are walking towards us and asked where the striped blouses are. I just look at him a bit confused and I'm like, sir, I don't work here so you gotta ask an employee. I raise my bags a bit to show him that I was shopping as well. Thinking well, H&M employees don't particularly look like employees so honest mistake. Well, where are they? I don't see them, he responds. I just stare at him, and when I look in the corner of my eye, I see a woman walking around with a keychain and an earpiece in. There were at least three people within a few meters working here. There's someone, I point at her. He grunts and walks towards this woman. That young lady, points at me, didn't want to help me, so maybe you will? That lady looks at me and goes, well, she doesn't work here, but I'll help you. She continues to help him while this man's wife keeps staring at me. We then went to the women's section to look for a nice dress, and she's there too. I just smile at her and keep browsing thinking it's a bit weird to just leave your husband like that, but okay. Are you gonna help me or what, she says. I don't really respond, thinking she was talking to someone else. She walks up to me. Hello, are you gonna help me? At this point, I probably looked like a super confused person. I just explained I don't work here. Luckily, the employee who helped her husband saw what was going on and started helping the woman. I know it's not extreme, but WTF. Thanks for watching. See you next time.